Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to The Illusion of Hope for Negroes Part 1. Remember, the countries which suffered most from the superior British method of slave capturing and trading and slave carrying were Congoland, the Niger Valley, the Guinea and Gold Coasts, the Gambia, Cross and Calabalans. Henry M. Stanley, and this is from the book Slavery and the Slave Trade in Africa, published 1893. And from the same man, Henry M. Stanley, 165 years after the discovery of the Cape, Sir John Hawkins pioneers the way for England to participate in the slave trade, hitherto carried on by the Portuguese, the Spanish, and the Dutch. And this is still from the book Slavery and the Slave Trade in Africa by Henry M. Stanley and published 1893. The Illusion of Hope Have you ever heard the statement, those that live on hope die fasting? Do you know any positive and tangible thing the slave master's golden calves of Christianity and Islam? offered or offers the Negroes. Do you think the golden calves were not simply used to create or build an illusion for the Negroes? And please do not try to tell us that Negroes are not the only ones that embraced the slave master's golden calves of Christianity. And remember that Negroes are not the only ones looking for freedom, but they are the only ones actually being killed in their numbers. For example, there are Scottish people looking for independence from England or from Britain. Nobody is killing each other over it. But look at Biafra, look at Ambazonia. And as the killings are going on, they are doing their African Cup of Nations. That should explain to you what the whole story is all about. They don't care about the Negroes. My brother's keeper. Did you know it is only in Africa and what was Negro land and Guinea that innocent people are killed and others celebrate the killers. Remember when we say killing here, we mean killing of innocent, unarmed men, women and children by the slave hunters renamed Nigerian army in 1863. And please remember before you think we concentrate on Nigeria, Ambazonia or Western Cameroon or Southern Cameroon or British Cameroon, whichever one you choose to call them, used to be part of Nigeria until 1961. So you need to bear this in mind. Sometimes when we say Nigeria, we are looking at it in the context of what the slave master defined it as, which we shall see shortly along the line on this video. And so what about the African Cup of Nations? and the killings in Biafra and Ambazonia and in West and Central Africa, in fact in the southern part of Nigeria and how they are still celebrating and playing their march as if nothing happened. So do you still believe that we are all Africans? At what point, if we may ask, will you as a Negro or a black person or even as an African ask questions like why me or why us? Remember when we say African here. We are referring to the Negro race because those from the northern part of Africa, those from Egypt or Morocco and all those areas are not the same as the Negroes. And so if the slave masters and their accomplices brought the golden calves of Christianity and Islam and imposed them on the Negroes, have you wondered in whose interest they could have done that? And do you think if the golden calves of Christianity and Islam held any genuine promises, the slave masters would have given them to the Negroes. And so, if you are a Biafran or an Ambazonian or actually a black person and running after the golden calves of the slave master, be it Christianity or Islam, what makes you think the people who cannot allow you basic freedom here on earth could have given you anything good? And do you not see how they are enjoying their African Cup of Nations, their media is reporting it, but not reporting your sorrows and pains. What does that tell you? Remember, the Nations Cup in itself is sponsored by the slave masters companies who actually metamorphosed from the slave trading company. So what does this tell us? 
If the slave master and his accomplices are fighting to defend one Nigeria or one Cameroon, what have we learned from that? Why is there no fighting between Somalia and Somaliland and between Ethiopia and Sidama? We want you to ask that simple question. Why are they not fighting in those places? But in a place like Biafra and Ambazonia, you are not even allowed to express that feeling or desire for freedom. You are not allowed to mention Biafra or Ambazonia freely without getting killed by the slave hunters that became army sometime around 1863. Remember, Biafra and Ambazonia colonial boundaries is simply the slave trade and colonialism but with a different name. Remember to ask yourself, why would somebody who lives on one side of this space and the one living on the other side be fighting to defend that demarcation created by a foreigner in the slave master and his accomplices because both are not indigenous to Africa. And remember in the past when we said that Biafra and Ambazonia freedom struggles of today will expose who and who were responsible for the brutal transatlantic and trans-Sahara slave trades. Also, expose Christianity and Islam as mere golden calves with nothing to do with the creator of heaven and earth, but merely tools of the slave trade. And that's if we assume, but without considering, there is something that exists called the creator of heaven and earth. And of course, we remember that the slave masters media, like the BBC, are mere fake news. Remember, if they can report one thing and leave out another, whether due to their political or economic interests, it means they are actually fake news because the BBC can be reporting about the African Cup of Nations because it is sponsored by the slave master and his accomplices, whereas it ignores the killings going on in the area. Even when they do, they report lies. Of course, the BBC was the official propaganda channel of Nigeria during the genocide against Biafra in 1967-70. Pattern. Understudying the Quakers and abolitionists and comparing them with the civil rights movement and Biafra and Ambazonia freedom struggles today shows they follow the same pattern. And aside, if you have studied the civil rights movement beyond the surface, you would see that Martin Luther King Jr. was deceived and when he realized it, something happened to him because the slave master, when he comes with his deception, you may not know what he's coming with until it gets to a point where it becomes very clear to you that that's what he's doing. And today, in the Biafra freedom struggle of IPOB, IPOB here means indigenous people of Biafra, some people in the leadership were deceived to betray Namdekano, so they may have been promised one thing or another because they don't know history or because there may be some supernatural powers that the slave master and his accomplices have that make them able to somehow hoodwink or deceive people even when those in the past were deceived along the same lines. So some people were deceived to betray Namdekano. And please don't get us wrong here, if you are wondering why we say what we say, it is based on facts, it is based on expectations from what we know in terms of history of the Negroes. For example, you should be able to ask yourself why the leadership of IPOB never talk about how Kanu could have been abducted and no one knew for over a week. And interestingly, to tell you that they are culpable, they resorted to cheap blackmail similar to the one seen in the slave master and his accomplices government of Nigeria where they can just speak on somebody and start their lies. For example, when they are saying it is Simon Eba that sold Mazun and the Kano and all the names they are calling. The simple question to ask is, will Kano be so stupid as to have told somebody that sold him out to be the one to come and start broadcasting from Radio Biafra? The answer is certainly no. But leaving that apart for now, we move on with hearing and believing. Faith, they say, comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And this is as coded in Romans 10:17. But then our question is, 
What if the voice is that of Jacob's and the body is that of Esau? And so ideally, how are we sure that what we are hearing is the word of God? And so we remember the system of confession in the Catholic Church, for example. It came from the slave trade when the slave master used it to extract information from the slaves and getting them to snitch on each other. That was how he exercised that control. So again, whose word are we listening to? Is it the word of God as a spiritual being that allegedly created the heavens and the earth? Or the God there is actually the slave master? And so, do you spend time to wonder or ask or try to find out why the slave masters would give the golden caps of Christianity and Islam to the Negroes but not to the Chinese or the Japanese? Do they love the Negroes? The answer is certainly no. Do they even believe that the Negroes are human? The answer is also no. So why would the slave master give them to the Negroes if they were good? And so when you celebrate or support senseless killings over one Nigeria or one Cameroon in defense of the slave master's colonial boundaries and slave master's interests in a place like Biafra and Ambazonia in Nigeria and Cameroon, what does that say about you? the slave master and the slave hunters. Do you know how the slave master succeeded in deceiving the world that it was the Negroes that were selling themselves? Remember, in that narrative, they always talk about Africans selling other Africans or Negroes sold themselves, but little or no mention of the slave master who was buying the slaves and how he could have bought them. And above all, remember, those are the things that make them look at the Negro as being subhuman. How can you actually buy somebody that is not a little child? For example, a man with wives and children and then you buy him in such a way that he stands there, you take him to where you want to sell him and he follows you. Even when the slave master claimed that sons sell their father. Now tell us by what you know in Western Central Africa even today how a little son, let's say even a big son for that matter, will go and sell the father and people will buy the father that is older for him to come and walk in a plantation before the son that is younger and the man will just follow him or the son to anywhere and then he sells them or they sell him and they take him and we want you to tell us how that man translates to 400 to 1000 men, women and children including nursing mothers in a slave ship. And so we want you to compare the case of Nandikano, a supposedly British citizen abducted by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices and then a judge who is a descendant of the slave hunters is used to abuse his rights in a manner akin to that of Stephen Biko in South Africa. If you wanted to take a look at Steve Biko of South Africa and if you remember in the past we told you that it was from Steve Biko of South Africa's bell before he was here arrested and murdered in jail that they copied Nandikano's bell conditions. If you remember in one of our previous videos, which we want you to follow closely what they are doing this time because their leadership of IPOB is heavily compromised and controlled by the slave master and his accomplices. And so in this scenario, we see that a judge who is a descendant of the slave hunters but presumed to be a black person or a fellow African is being used to abuse the rights of another person that is supposedly an African on the behest of the slave master. Take note of that, on the behest of the slave master. So now permit us to ask you, can you get a British woman or man as a judge and use him or her as a black person to abuse the rights of a fellow British? like they are using Bintanyako or Malami, Abubakar Malami today to do? The answer is certainly no. But you see, part of why they see the Negroes the way they see them is because of the activities of these non-Negroes, that's the descendant of the slave hunters, like we told you before. There is no better way to say it. They lack the feeling of humanity and they lack common sense. It is their animalistic tendencies, their behavior as beasts that rubs off on the Negroes because people tend to see the Negroes as the same 
as the unintelligent hermetic groups. So if you look at this map, for example, you will see that it has Negroid and it has Negroes. So that shows you they are different. But like we told you, the slave master is a subtle beast. And so with what they are doing today with the judges in Nigeria because of that lack of humanity and common sense, tomorrow they can actually say it was Africans that did it themselves or they can say it is blacks that did it themselves and don't get it wrong here please they see it as because they are not intelligent enough they are not human they are subhuman that is why a foreigner can come from her place and get you to abuse the right of supposedly your own sibling and you can ask why is this person that is sending me to do this not doing the same to his or her own people like you see the scottish independence referendum you see that they are not shooting themselves over it but like we told you they are slave hunting accomplices the same brain they had that made them capture and sell the negroes to some other people that's the same brain they have today so that's why they are using the likes of malami and nyako against a fellow black person that's one thing you have to bear in mind. We want you to ask yourself that simple question. Why is the British not killing those that seek independence in Scotland, but coming to incite their slave hunting accomplices against Biafran and Bazunia? Remember, it's the same people, both in Cameroon and Nigeria, the Fulanese. And so to see why they consider it something to do with mental or intellectual inferiority, if we so put it, let us reference The Matthiadom of Man by Winwood Reed, and this was published in 1872. Here we see that God made all men equal is a fine sounding phrase and has also done good service in its day, but it is not a scientific fact. On the contrary, there is nothing so certain as the natural inequality of men, those who outlive hardships and sufferings which fall on all alike owe their existence to some superiority not only of body but of mind remember they feel that it is because the negroes are foolish they don't have sense they are actually not human that they were able to capture them as slaves bear this in mind and remember at that time there were no newspapers no televisions no internet no telephones or anything so they will come to a community pack them kill those they can't sell and that was it there will be no news carrying it the same way you see them treating biafran and bazonia killings today that's the same game they played it doesn't matter if you believe us or not all we encourage you to do is use your common sense and try to ask yourself why would the bbc be there reporting every little idiocy they see among the black people but then when their slave hunting accomplices kill people they now go deaf and dumb they will no longer report it ask yourself that question and remember the bbc was the voice of nigeria during the genocide against biafra in 1967 to 1970 you just need to see that it is a british thing it is in their dna they can't do without it they can't imagine it as a people that the negroes can be free so that's what you're seeing it doesn't matter whether you believe us or not they will expose themselves if you can open your eyes and mind and see what games they are playing after all, their Prime Minister today is of this opinion. You can see it there, talking about the colonialists and the slave hunters going back there to repeat whatever they did in the past without this time being made to have any regrets or feel sorry for it. That should tell you all you need to know. And he goes on further here to say, It will easily be conceived that among such superior-minded men, there would be some who, stimulated by the memory of that which was past and by the fear of that which might return, would strain to the utmost their ingenuity to control and guide the fecal river which had hitherto spotted with their lives. And in the event this does not make enough meaning to you, we just need you to understand that it was made a matter of intelligence. The Negroes were not as intelligent. That was why they were able to enslave them. But they don't tell everyone that those that captured the Negroes are not Negroes. Like you see Malami today. Can you tell us that he is a brother to somebody like Nandikano? And he is used by the slave master against Nandikano. The same way his forebears were used against or at that time to capture the Negroes. 
can you say that somebody like Binta Nyako is like an average Negro woman? The answer is certainly no. She is oppressing and sacrificing somebody else's nine months on the behest of the slave master that probably doesn't have a child, that doesn't care about black people. But that's how bad it is for the Negroes. So they use these unintelligent hermetic groups that lack humanity and common sense to perpetuate their evil. But then it rubs off on the Negroes. If you are doubting what we're saying, remember that after the American independence, they did not free the Negroes. So let us reference the Baptist Home Mission Monthly, Volume 19, January 1897, number one. And it tells us here that America is preeminently the land of equality. Every citizen of the Republic has the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and rightfully claims the equal protection of the laws under which he lives. The slave ship brought slaves, those who could claim no rights whatever, but were to receive in silence and submission whatever treatment was accorded to them by their masters. In a new country such as this was, then, there was great need of labor, and the slave trade was very profitable because there was great demand for the work of the poor creatures who were brought from Africa to America. But our interest is for you to see that they were not entitled to that creed of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, and therein lies the problem. We want you to compare it with what is happening in Biafra and Ambazonia today. It will give you all you need to know about who the slave masters are and who their accomplices are as well. And it should also explain to you why the American creed at independence says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But then, they did not free the Negroes because they were not considered human at that time. Remember, it is because of people like Malami, people like Obasanjo, people like Bintanyako, that Negroes are not considered human because they are not sensible enough to ask themselves, how can somebody come from Europe and be using me to oppress my sibling or somebody that looks like me without doing the same to his own siblings. So ideally, they come from Europe and tell them that colonial boundaries must be defended at the expense of supposedly their own siblings, at the expense of their own brothers and sisters, whereas they don't do the same to their own people. So these are the reasons they don't consider Negroes as human, even when those people that are doing it are not even Negroes by their classification. So ideally, what they inside them would do is telling them how they are superior to these ones. So to prove that they are superior, they get them to be doing things that make them look ideally stupid. If you heard Obasanjo recently talking about who owns the oil, you will see that there is absolutely nothing upstairs. As you would expect from people who are in the slave hunting terror group now called Nigerian Army. But we shall look at that in a different video. And although this is not a response video, we see where Mr. himself alone, who we can confirm is a descendant of the slave hunters, says, The slave masters tell us in their books what they bought people with. How can you be so naive? As to think that the British don't have it documented what they purchased people with. Remember, he's all been here for the last couple of years just to establish that he could have been a sell, but has been unable so far to tell us how one man could sell another man. How does he come in and walk into the man's house and he agrees to be sold? And even if he says he's an individual or a group, it's difficult to gather that number of people which we have proven several times over. But we want to ask him a few questions. And please bear in mind that we are not talking about him or asking him questions so that his mind can change. You can never change their minds. Imagine people whose forebears were the slave hunters until today they are still the same way their phobias were. Like we told you, they lack humanity and common sense. So our reason for asking the questions is so that we can learn from their lack of humanity and common sense. At least before we defend their rubbish, we know who they are. 
And before we go into that, we see what exposes him as a Nigerian. So here he writes, Then Calloway is either a Mugo or just seeking money and attention. So for those who have been following this individual, he claims to be a so-called African-American, but he is always defending the Fulani and the slave master. And remember, we told you that the slave master and his accomplices, they work together. For him to have used the term Mugu, which is a Nigerian term to indicate a very highly gullible or foolish person. So if you were getting some of those emails from Nigeria talking about a pile of money stashed somewhere, that if you paid them something, then they will give you that part of money or their father died in a plane crash, all those kind of stories. So those that fall for it are usually called Mugu in Nigerian palace. So he used that term and that gives him away. But it doesn't matter whether he does it or says it or not. We know he's certainly not a so-called African-American. Although he claims to be, remember the code of voice of Jacob and body of Esau. That's their code. It is the same game they play with uh, Joseph planting his cup in Benjamin's bag. That's the same thing. They have to create a pretext. But that's subject of a different video. So we just want you to take note of the fact that he has been proven to be a Nigerian, likely a Fulani, hiding under a false identity. And you can very easily see some of his questions. He claims you ask silly questions like, why would they want a person in, in a coma? The person is only knocked out temporarily. When they come to, they find themselves compromised. Now, this is his effort to explain how the women and children get to the slave ship. He says one man goes to another man's house, hit him on the head and carry him to go and sell. Remember, as he is carrying the man, the woman, the children will raise an alarm, they will even kill him or the vigilante, the young boys won't even allow him. But he's talking about carrying the corpse of another man or the man that is uh, half sick or in coma and walking down to go and sell him somewhere to tell you how big their brains are. Like we told you, they lack humanity, they lack common sense. They fool in full and it drives the budgets of the Europeans and the Americans, which we shall look at in a different video. But our interest is to show you who they are, how they reason and what they say. So they are the reason Africa is the way it is. So the slave master in his place builds it very well, but uses them to prevent development in the Negro areas we shall look at that in a different video. Let us then reference slavery and the slave trade in Africa by Henry M. Stanley and this was published in 1893. Here we see that the countries which suffered most from the superior British method of slave capturing and trading and slave carrying were Congoland, the Niger Valley, the Guinea and Gold Coast, the Gambia, cross and calabalans. So we ask you Mr. himself alone, can you tell us if the arrow slave trading or the one of hitting somebody on the head and carrying him to go and sell is superior to the British method of slave capturing and trading and slave carrying and if this calabar they mentioned here was only that the slaves were coming from Calabar only and was not coming from what they tell you today is Igbo land. Remember, Igbo is the term for all the slaves from the Bight of Biafra and Benin. We shall look at that in a different video. But let's read further here. It tells us that the system adopted by the British crews in those days was very similar to that employed by the Arabs today in Inner Africa. They landed at night, surrounded the selected village, and then set fire to the huts, and as the frightened people issued out of the burning houses, they were seized and carried to the ships, or sometimes the skipper in his hurry for sea sent his crew to range through the town he was trading with, and regardless of rank, to seize upon every man, woman and child they met, old town, Greek town and Duke town in Old Calabar have often witnessed this summary and high-handed proceeding. So we ask you, Mr. himself alone, at least you have cited the British as having record of what they claim to have bought people with. Now, which of these makes sense to you? 
to get up to 400 to 500, 600 to 1,000 men, women, and children in a slave ship? Is it where one person goes to carry another and hit him on the head and take him to go and sell and nobody sees him on the road? People don't attack him, whereas even Europeans that came and were mistaken to be slave hunters were murdered. You are telling us that then somebody will come and hit another person on the head and carry him to go and sell to the same Europeans, which doesn't make sense. But at least from what the British author wrote here, who was an explorer, it shows you who were behind it. All they did was to lie. They tell you that it is the Negroes selling themselves. It is Igbo people that are killing themselves, which you see them using the Fulanese to do today too. It doesn't change. It's the same pattern. And here we see that the slave trade must have been a lucrative commerce. There can be no doubt. When we consider that from 1777 to 1807 upwards of 3 million Africans had been sold in the West Indies. All those forts which may be seen lining the west coast of Africa today were constructed principally by means of the revenue derived from the slave tax. Now we ask you, how can less than 20 people be the one funding the capture of 3 million Africans? And if it wasn't them, tell us who did. At least we have seen that there is British method of slave capturing in Calabar. But you are blaming a bunch of priests that are most of them about 80 or 90 years old, which doesn't make sense. You have previously claimed that they brought urban warriors to raid for them. We asked you for a citation. You have never been able to provide one. We still challenge you to provide us with where it is recorded that they are captured or sold any slaves. For those who are following this, he has been pretending to be a so-called African-American. Remember, part of the slave master's game is that pretense. So when they pretend to be who they are not, they will be lying and you will be blaming those they claim to be who they are not. For example, when they claim to be a so-called African-American and defending the Fulani and the slave master here, you will be tempted to think that African-Americans are like that without knowing that they are not who they claim to be. That's part of their game. You will see that the same game was played in the Biafran genocide of 1967 to 1970. Then what the slave master and his accomplices were doing were to disguise as if they were Biafran soldiers. Then they will go massacre innocent men, women and children in the border towns and then use the BBC to tell the world that it is the rebels trying to force the minorities to join Biafra. If you look at it today, that's the same game they are playing. When they go and massacre innocent people, they will say it is IPOB trying to enforce it at home. Now we ask you, if they were sensible human beings, wouldn't they be talking of negotiations since they claim these are our brothers? But like we told you, they lack humanity, they lack common sense. You won't hear from the likes of Obasanjo or Gowon because those were in the Nigerian army and no sensible human Human being. It doesn't matter how you see what we're saying can be in the Nigerian army. They were the slave hunters. They lack humanity and they lack common sense. And there is no better way to say it. We're sorry.